Bless your heart, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's uh, yeah, Bob and Sue. Sue, are you from uh, Glen Burnie? Sussex County. Sussex County. Woohoo! Uh, yeah, I'm actually from Brooklyn Park, Bob, the, the, wherever you're at. Uh, yeah, Brooklyn Park and Glen Burnie used to be. It's on the other side of the bridge. And, uh, and so um, we're trying to get this thing. Oh, there you go. Thanks, man. Um, and we came here in 87, uh, we pastored Living Water Church, uh, which is on the other, Sussex County down there on Route 9, and I remember when we first came up here in 87, uh, we had, you know, went to Elam, and, and then we pastored in Wilmington, North Carolina for eight years or so, <clears throat> we church planted down there, and we came back up, and I really didn't want to pastor again, I really didn't want to pastor again. Uh, you know, it's either have to hear from God or you're a sadist, one or the other. You know, you just take a lot of abuse sometimes. But uh, um, I didn't really want to do it. And then we ended up pastoring again uh, in, in, in uh, Living Water Church. And um, now North Carolina you had some smells, had hogs and all that stuff. And I came up here. I'd never been at this part of the eastern shore before it was always route 50 from baltimore and we just thought on the other side that they made baltimore to go to ocean city for us hippies <laughs> and so we just would go to ocean city i never saw this part of the eastern shore but when we got here i was saying to my wife when we were coming in i said what the heck is that smell <laughs> and she said i don't know I, that's exactly what they said to me and i, I said to some of the elders there living one i said after about two days there i was kind of candidating and and that's what they said. I said, well, i got to ask you, what the heck is this smell? And they said, what smell? Oh, that smell. That's money. That's money what that is. And they let me know this bunch of chickens. And that, was, uh, that was great stuff. So, yeah, it's good. Thank you so much for that, for your kindness and your care uh, and your, your words. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of opportunity to speak to a lot of people. Sometimes I get in trouble with the body of Christ and some of the things I have to say because we talk about mental health issues. And uh, so I have an opportunity to, uh, God's given me an opportunity to just kind of speak around the country in different conferences and um, doing some writing. I have a second book coming out, Struggling Well, which talks about some of this. I'll pro it'll probably be somewhat controversial, but whatever. As long as they buy it, I don't care. Um, <laughs> if nothing else, it makes a good doorstop <laughs> at the end of the day. But it's a pleasure. I remember, I remember Bob when we first had, uh, I remember Bob and Sue, of course, and then Bob Muncie. Um, my gosh, when that uh, Howard Rodney Brown, that, that, that move of God was moving, and, and uh, you guys came down. You were with Bob then, I guess, yeah. weren't you? And, and, uh, and uh, so, I, I mean, I remember we introduced Bob and you guys to Elam, and the rest is kind of history. Bob's taken off with Elam. And, um, but I remember Bob, I don't think you guys at that time, you were beginning to move in this, but in this kind of realm, but it was kind of new. But you never looked back. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> you didn't let any grass grow under your feet. It's a real blessing to be with you guys. Well, look, I got, I got about, uh, what, 35 minutes, something like that. So I'm going to get on it. PowerPoint isn't working. They say very possibly it might be working uh, uh, the service after this, so we'll see. It's not a big deal. But I want to share with you a couple things, if I could, please. I want to talk with you about realizing peace in your thoughts. How do you realize peace in your thoughts when the enemy barrages you with everything known to man throughout the course of the day? Uh, I want to share with you out of Philippians 4, and I'm just going to read uh, verses 4 through um, verse 9. Philippians 4, verses 4 through 9. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and I'll say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, check this out, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And if you do that, then the peace of God, it says, which uh, transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds, or psyche, in Christ Jesus. Then he said, finally, brothers and sisters, whatsoever is true, whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is admirable, whatsoever is on, whatsoever is, and whatsoever is, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think on these things. 
whatever you've learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I don't know about you, but that, that is a mouthful of stuff, you know? That is a lot of stuff to do. But yet it's the word of God. I believe it. From Genesis to Revelation, I, I believe the word of God. I take it literally. Let me just, let me just kind of give you a, 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 a summation of what that's saying, if I could. Check it out. Now, this is what we're supposed to do. So we're supposed to rejoice always. Rejoice always. Of course, you do that always, right? And then it says, be gentle to everyone. And of course, you are gentle to everyone constantly and perpetually. And there's never a time that you are not. And don't be anxious about anything. Ooh, 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 there you go. Never an anxious moment in your life has ever come upon your brain. If anything, and then it goes on to say, uh, in every situation, say that with me, every situation, <laughs> we're to bring our prayers and requests thanksgiving to God. And if we do this, it says the peace of God, or if you look at that, it says the tranquility of God, or the harmony, that's what that word means, of God, peace, will surpass your understanding, or we call it the neuropathways, in our brain, that is the things that we set patterns to do. They could be good things. They could be bad things. They could be things that we worry about. Or, but, you know, the neural pathways in our brain set patterns. And so sometimes that isn't good. Sometimes it's good. If you're doing a good thing and you have a good routine, that's great. If you're doing a bad thing, then that might not be the best day for you. And it says it will surpass your understanding and protect our minds and psyches in Christ Jesus. <laughs> oh, oh, but there's more, as the commercial says. Oh, but there's more. No, no, no. We don't stop there. It goes on now. Every thing that is true and everything that is noble and everything that is right and everything that is pure and lovely and honorable, everything that is outstanding, everything that is praiseworthy, we're supposed to think on these things. Now, I don't know about you. I believe the word of God, okay? I don't know about you, but that is one tall glass of water. Huh. How many of us do that all the time in all areas, all day, every week, every month, every year, every decade of your life? Whew, thank you, because if you did, I was going to say, you got to come up and pray for me, just lay hands on me, do something, because... Do you know why we can't do that? We can't do that because we're messed up. Now, don't, don't throw anything at me right now. I mean, unless it's cash. Don't throw anything at me, okay? Not yet. Hold on before you, before you start saying bad stuff about me. We're messed up. We're messed up as a result of the fall. All of us are messed up by virtue of what Adam did. Bad stuff has happened uh, whatever went on in the garden, all the glorious stuff, it ain't, we're not, you know, what is that, uh, you're not in Kansas anymore, you know. <clears throat> Things have changed, and they've changed radically. And we are messed up. Thus, an understanding of the grace of God in our lives. Because through all of this stuff that we don't do, though we know we need to do, and will change us wonderfully, still, God gives us blessing, and he forgives us, and he gives us things and, and meets us even when we don't deserve it. That's the grace of God. So when I'm not doing these things and I know that I should, or I'm doing them and or I don't stay there, the enemy wants to beat me up thinking, if you're not doing this constantly, 24-7, all the time, then you're not the best Christian. Then the grace of God comes in and says, don't listen to him. You have a human condition. You're screwed up. But I'm not. And I've come to do exceedingly abundant in your life. But if you listen to him, you've got to do this constantly. And you can't ever fall short. Therefore, you're never going to be able to connect with the fall. I don't want to connect with the fall. But I'm sorry. <laughs> it's part of who I am. At the same time, I understand the authenticity and the power of the word of God. So, PowerPoint, which I don't have. Okay. Then, um... Then look at this. Here's where it all started. It's not your fault. It's not my fault. But yet we have responsibility. It started in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, where it says, Then um, the eyes of both of them, both of them being Adam and Eve, were opened, and they realized 
that they were naked. Now, nakedness was not a sin. Man, of course, has perverted that, and we've got all kinds of crazy stuff, but it wasn't a sin then. But as soon as their eyes were opened, went, oh, you know, this is really bad. We've got to cover ourselves up. And man hasn't stopped trying to cover himself up from that time to this time. The fall began that moment, and it has not stopped, and it won't stop in our lives until we close our eyes in death, and we're with Jesus, or he comes back, or whatever he chooses to do first. So when that happened, you have to understand, when that happened, all God thinking, all God acting, all God living, and all God reasoning went right out the window. And with that went peace and joy. The enemy robbed us of those things. And it affects us. So, so if the fall messed us up, and it did, and Philippians tells us that we're, tells us that, uh, we're supposed to act, and we're supposed to live, and we're supposed to think the way that Paul says that we should, then how is it that we do life without feeling guilty about how we act and live and think? Now, there's, 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 uh, so this will get better. You might be going, Fred, are you the Grim Reaper? I mean, what are you bringing to us here? You know, it's a lot of heavy stuff. Just, just stay with me. So where is the peace and where is the joy in our thoughts on a constant, perpetual basis? How is it that we, each and every one of us, kind of navigate through or around the difficulties, around the challenges, around the sorrows, and even around the tragedies of life? It's, it's, uh, Bob's in counseling. We just had another suicide two weeks ago. It's, um, uh, and one of our clients, it's, it's, these are Christians. It's, it's, it's horrible the things that the enemy tries to do to people and sometimes succeeds in doing. Sometimes it's not easy out there, guys and gals. There is sorrow and sometimes tragedy. You've experienced tragedy here in this church. Sometimes it isn't always roses, but somehow through it all, there is God. And there is hope. But if I don't acknowledge that this stuff happens and the enemy tries to rob me 